So I've been playing Starfield all week, and while I wouldn't say that it's a very complicated game at all, because it's so huge there's a lot of small tips that you can miss that are going to make your life a lot easier if you know about them. So here's my list of things that I wish I knew about or made use of earlier. First of all, did you know that you can access your ship's cargo hold from anywhere within around 300 meters around the ship? I saw someone mention this online and I genuinely didn't know that you can just go into the menu, select the ship's menu and then press whatever button is assigned to the cargo hold. Whenever I had anything to store, I ran into the ship's cockpit and stored it via this little screen here. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are probably doing the same thing right now. The next thing also took me a while to realize, and I'm sure people will look back at this in the future and just shake their heads in disbelief, but you can actually hide your spacesuit in settlements, as well as your helmets in breathable environments. To be honest, I was already looking for a setting like this, because your companions often run around without spacesuits. However, the option is kind of hidden inside of your inventory. You have to select the spacesuits, and then it comes up as a button prompt down here. And of course, the same thing works for the helmet category as well. The next tip was an absolute lifesaver for me because I was getting so frustrated trying to make things align inside of my outpost and inside of apartments that I was so close to never going there ever again. When you're playing this game on mouse and keyboard, you're turning things by the click of your mouse button. Unfortunately, just clicking your mouse button once turns whatever you're trying to turn by like 20 degrees, so it's pretty much impossible to make anything align properly. But all of that changed when I saw someone mention that you can go into your control settings and then find a setting called Outpost Item Rotation Speed. I've set that to the lowest setting possible and I haven't looked back since. While this has honestly saved outposts for me, I do still think the Bethesda should add like a grid snap system. Speaking about outposts, I actually think you shouldn't worry about these very early on into the game, especially if you want to go into New Game Plus. That's because New Game Plus will wipe your outposts and I think also your ship designs, so you're gonna have to start from scratch anyways. So if you're gonna go and spend like 50 hours on your outpost now, just know that if you ever want to do New Game Plus, it's all gonna get wiped. One reason a lot of people give for you to build your outpost early on is that you can accumulate resources over time while you're playing. However, in this game you can just go to sleep and all of your extractors will still be producing materials. In fact, you could go sleep on a planet with time dilation and you would get even more resources. So personally, I think unless you're super interested in the outpost system, it's something that you can worry about later on into the game. Now, some of you might be worried about all of the resources that you're going to miss out on that you're going to need for research. A lot of these can be bought from vendors throughout the world. For example, in Aquila City, there's this place right here, which sells a lot of the resources that you might need. This is even easier if you click on the research project and select track down here. And this is going to show you a little icon next to whatever resources you need for your research project whenever you're in the vendor screen. So this is a great way of tracking whatever you need to buy. Speaking of vendors, these restock every 24 hours, meaning every 24 hours you're going to have new items available. So for example, if you need to sell a lot of items and the vendor has limited credits, just come back 24 hours later by just resting on a chair nearby, for example. Alternatively, I've used this a few times when I really needed to stock up on ammo. One vendor that I can highly recommend is actually really close to Alpha Centauri, where Jamison is at, the place with New Atlantis. It's called The Wolf System, and there's a station here called The Den. You can find a vendor called Marcel Duris, who will happily buy any contraband items that you have, and he's generally just a good trader to trade to anyways, because he has like 11,000 credits. So sometimes when I'm done with a bunch of quests, I take a quick stop in The Den to get rid of some items. Now personally, I don't have that much experience with Bethesda games outside of Skyrim, so one thing that took me a while to get used to is the looting in this game. You'll find so many different items, but hardly any of them are worth it, okay? Don't go around looting a bunch of even crafting items early on, because you'll be able to make them so cheaply later on. And all they're gonna do for now is just crowd your inventory with space that you could use for other things. A personal rule of thumb for me is about one carry weight per 1000 credits value. I know it's very tempting to go collect every single statue that you find in this game, because the amounts of credits seem really high. But honestly, it's just not worth your time. There's way better ways to make credits later on into the game if you really want to. But still keep your eyes open for valuable items, especially gear pieces, which can go for quite a bit of credits. Something else that I would recommend against crowding your inventory with when you start off is any resources that you can find throughout the world. I know it's counterintuitive, but these aren't really worth that much. And the only thing you're really gonna need it for is if you wanna mod your weapons, or if you wanna do research, or you're doing your outpost early on. The thing is you have so little shared inventory space early on that it's going to be hard storing all of the resources for whenever you actually need them 30 hours later into the game. 
So I would say early on just resist the temptation of simply harvesting everything that you can find and just go for whatever resources you actually need, plus maybe some rare resources that you can put in long term storage. There's seriously just no point carrying around that stack of iron until later on into the game, even in your ship's cargo hold. Now if your storage needs are really dire and you just have absolutely nowhere to put whatever you found but you really really want to keep it, in the basement of the lodge, which is on Jemison, you can find an unassuming little yellow container that has infinite storage space. Now the downside of this container is that it doesn't link to any of the crafting benches. So let's say you need iron to craft something, you're gonna have to go get it out of the container to actually be able to craft whatever you want to craft. So preferably you should be using your inventory, your ship's cargo hold or your apartment storage first. But I know that some of you are loot goblins so you'll appreciate this tip anyways. Also I would personally be very careful with this because I don't know if it's actually intended. So if there's ever going to be a patch that wipes out all of the storage from this chest, don't blame me, okay? Now if you still have storage problems, there's an early ship that I would recommend called the Econo Hall, which you can buy for a reasonable amount of credits. The best thing about it is that it has a lot of storage space, so it makes it very easy to store whatever things you find during your missions. It's also a class A ship that anyone's going to be able to fly, so you don't have to worry about not having the piloting skill for it yet. If you're later into the game and you have some credits left, and more importantly, the ability to fly class C ships, I'm going to recommend that you get a spaceship that has at least a jump range of 21 light years. That's because later on into the main mission, there's going to be a quest that requires you to have that jump distance to be able to get from one place to another. I found out about this the hard way by using all of my credits that I had at the time to buy a ship and it didn't have the required jump range, so I was locked out from doing more main story at the moment until I could actually get another ship or upgrade whatever I had. Now, speaking of ship classes, to fly some of the larger ships, you're going to need some points invested in the tech tree to be able to actually pilot them. As far as the skill trees go, I'm going to recommend that you don't make the same mistake that I did and invest a ton of points into combat. Honestly, it's just pretty pointless. You're going to find weapons later on into the game that are going to let you deal with pretty much anything that you can find either way. I'm gonna say find one or maybe two weapons that you're interested in using a lot and just put a bunch of points into those, but I wouldn't go overboard personally. It's way better to spend these points into more utility focused stuff, for example undocking research, being able to pilot your ships better, being able to fly other ships, persuasion, vendor prices, all of those I would probably get first on a second run rather than investing into combat. Now something else that I didn't really enjoy early on was the maps that they implemented into the game because these are interesting. I mean honestly look at them, I don't know what they were thinking. Have I've been using a map online on the website called Map Genie which has really helped me understand the places that I'm dealing with. I don't know but for some reason I really struggle memorizing wherever things are whenever I don't have a map in front of myself in these games. I think it has to do with how a lot of these places look very similar in Neon or in New Atlantis for example. With the map I've just had a much easier time navigating the game and after a while I didn't even need it anymore because it was burnt into my brain anyways. So I can highly recommend you keep this open on your phone or maybe on a second screen if you have one. Now if you're anything like me then you probably struggled with the new lock picking early on into the game. So if you're chronically out of digipicks, inside of New Atlantis there's a vendor in the well at Apex Electronics which sells 7 to 10 digipicks at a time. So you can buy these go rest and go get some more. And this is basically infinite digipicks as long as you have the credits for it. You can find the well by going through the elevator that is between Jemis and Mercantile and the Terra Brew store. And when you're down there, Apex Electronics is pretty hard to miss to be honest. Something else that I didn't do enough early on was sleep. And I don't mean IRL, I mean in game. When you sleep, not only do you get full HP, but you also get a well rested bonus for extra experience points. And additionally, sleeping can also get rid of most of the status effects. So I would recommend you at least sleep often enough to maintain the well-rested bonus. Now when you're just getting started, I would highly recommend you stick with the main story for a while. Now I can't tell you why because of spoilers, but I'm going to play you a completely unrelated clip from Skyrim and let you figure out the rest. In this game, you'll be running around a lot on planet surfaces. However, there's an item that makes all of that a little bit faster that I didn't even think of using early on for some reason. It's called Amp, and you'll actually find a lot of these early on into the game. A lot of vendors sell them, and you can actually craft them as well. These will increase your movement speed, and honestly, I just wish I'd started using them earlier. I've been using a shotgun too, and this is just a lifesaver when it comes to gap closing and getting up close to enemies. 
Fast travel via the map can be a little bit tedious, but you can actually use your scanner to fast travel to most places. And again, this took me just way too long to figure out until I randomly opened up my scanner inside of the ship. So for example, if you're looking down at the planet's surface and we open up the scanner, we now actually see the landing sites. Simply point your scanner where you want to go, press E, and then just fast travel. The same thing actually works when you're on foot. For example, if we stood outside of the lounge and we want to go to the mass district, just point your scanner at it, select it, and then fast travel. Outside of that, the scanner can also be useful to find whatever quest objective you're currently tracking because it will show arrows on the ground that direct you there. Another tip that I have is that the game has a cover system. And again, this is just something that I realized way too late. You can run up to any corner, press aim down sights, and your character is going to lean. So next time you're in combat, give that a try. And finally, the last tip, there's a mission called Mantis that you're going to get very early on, which tells you to go to a secret outpost. Now this is some distance away, but you can reach it by jumping from system to system. And the mission here is admittedly pretty hard early on into the game, but it's going to reward you with some of the best gear available in the game period, plus a spaceship. So if you're confident in your gamer abilities, maybe give this mission a try early on. These were all the tips I have for now. If you have any others that you want to let people know about, please do in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.